Hello class, welcome to our lesson in general physics 1. We will be talking about uniformly accelerated motion. This is the simplest type of motion. This motion has a constant velocity, zero acceleration, and its instantaneous velocity is equal to average velocity. For many practical applications such as falling objects and skidding cars, the acceleration of these bodies is nearly constant. The velocities change with respect to time at a constant rate. There are five kinematic equations. First, V is equal to D over T, or velocity is equal to displacement over time. A, acceleration, is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity. Third equation is uh, average velocity is equal to final velocity minus the initial velocity over time. Fourth, displacement is equal to initial velocity times time plus one half acceleration times time square. Fifth kinematic equation is two times acceleration times displacement is equal to final velocity squared minus initial velocity squared where v is the average velocity, v sub f is our final velocity, v sub o is our initial velocity, d is our displacement, acceleration is equal to a, and our t means our time. For example, as an engineer, you were asked to design a runway for an airport. An airplane that will use this airfield must reach a speed of 30 meters per second before takeoff and should accelerate at 2 meters per second squared. How much time, letter A, does it take this airplane to reach the takeoff speed? Letter B, what must be the minimum length of the runway for the aircraft to reach the speed? Let's start first in identifying letter A, how much time does it take this airplane to reach the takeoff speed? Okay, from the situation that is given, what we know is that velocity, initial velocity is equal to zero meters per second because we know that the airplane is from or starts from rest. Our final velocity is equal to 30 meters per second and our Acceleration is equal to 2 meters per second squared. And what is asked is the time it took the airplane to take off. So what we can use based on our given is our equation number 2. If you can recall our equation number 2, is equal to acceleration is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity over time. Let's manipulate this equation so we can, we are only left with letter T or our time. So acceleration times time is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity. You divide both sides by our acceleration so you will be left with T is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity over our acceleration. Hence, we can use this one by simply substituting the values of initial velocity, final velocity, and our acceleration to this equation. T is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity over acceleration. Let's substitute the values. Final velocity is 30 meters per second minus zero meters per second over our acceleration, which is two meters per second squared. Using our calculator, this is now equal to 30 divided two is 15 second because we are left with second, this is canceled out, and the other one is canceled out. So the final answer is 15 second. What must be the minimum length of the runway for the aircraft to reach the speed. So basically for letter B, what is asked or unknown is our distance. For letter B, the unknown is our distance. We know again that our initial velocity is zero. 
final velocity is 30 meters per second and our acceleration is equal to 2 meters per second squared. So, if you know this given, and this is what is asked, if you look at your kinematic equations I have given you, what is the easiest equation that we can use to get the final answer? So, we can use the equation number 5. If you can recall, our equation number 5 is 2 times acceleration times distance is equal to final velocity squared minus our initial velocity squared. Manipulating this by dividing both sides with 2a, we can get distance is equal to final velocity squared minus initial velocity squared over 2 times acceleration. So, we can use this equation now to get our distance. So, let's remember the equation that we can use from our derivation. D is equal to final velocity squared minus initial velocity squared over 2 times acceleration. Let's just substitute the values. Final velocity is 30 meters per per second that is squared quantity squared minus zero meters per second this is squared over two times two our acceleration is two meters per second squared use your calculators 30 squared is 900 meters squared per second squared 0 squared is 0, so you don't have to write it, over 2 times 2 is 4 meters per second squared. So, 900 divided 4 is equal to 225. What we are left is meters squared over second squared, meters over second squared. So, our meter, 1 meter here is equal to 1. So, cancelled out. Second over second is equal to 1. So, we are left with meters. Therefore, the distance or the length of the airplane it took before it can take off is 20, 225 meters. Our final answer is, I will write this here again. Our distance is equal to 225 meters meters. An important example of uniformly accelerated motion is the free fall of an object. When an object falls under the influence of gravity alone, it is in a state of free fall. It is a type of motion where no external factors aside from gravity influences the acceleration of an object. There are actually two ideas regarding free fall. The question is, which falls faster if two objects has different weight but are dropped at the same height? Is it the heavy object or the lighter one? According to Aristotle, it will be the heavy object that falls faster. But Galileo stated in his experiments that in the presence of air resistance, all objects fall at the same time. According to Galileo, air actually acts as air, as air resistance to light objects with large surface area. But in many circumstances, air resistance is negligible. Hence, Galileo have proven that all objects in the absence of air resistance fall with the same constant acceleration if the two objects with different masses are from the same height. So acceleration of the free fall is due to gravity which is denoted by the small letter g that is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared at the surface of the earth Hence, the magnitude of our gravity is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared and its direction is downward towards the center of the earth. So, free fall may be treated as a case of uniformly accelerated motion in which the kinematic equations apply. 
Always remember the five kinematic equations I have mentioned earlier. Since the motion is along the vertical direction, D is replaced with D sub Y and acceleration A with G in the equations. For example, suppose you have thrown a ball upward to the top of a cliff with a speed of 29.4 meters per second. Compute its velocity at each second. Given values are initial velocity is equal to 29.4 meters per second and we are asked to get its final velocity each second therefore our time will be one second so we can use our equation number two if you can recall that is acceleration is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity over time but because we are talking about free fall Remember that our acceleration will now be equal to the pull of gravity. Therefore, our equation will now be the pull of gravity is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity over time. Manipulating this because we are asked to get our final velocity. Pull of gravity times time is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity. Manipulate this one. Let's transfer this to the other side. So you will have positive initial velocity plus gravity times time is equal to final velocity. But because we know that the direction of our motion is upward, Therefore, it is opposing the pull of gravity. Therefore, our value here, our gravity here is negative. Therefore, our gravity is equal to, in, is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We can use this equation here. Final velocity is now equal to initial velocity plus our gravity is negative g times our time. So let's just substitute the values. Initial velocity is 29.4 meters per second plus this is negative 9.8 meters per second squared times our time which is 1 second. So using your calculator, you will get 19.6 meters per second. And that is our final velocity. Okay, I hope you have understood the process. That's it for today. Bye-bye.